this way. We step into the movie gallery. Ready to die? But of course! Hello, welcome back to Like a Little Bit, the last episode of Shadow of York. Masquerade Edition and Shadow Edition. And there's a ghost? I think it's a ghost, I'm not sure. Is it a ghost? Uh, maybe, perhaps. I would say things, probably. Anyway, as Nikki don't apart as silent as possible, try to surprise her. Surprise! When I reach the bathroom, I see something unexpected. It's me like a ton of bricks at the beginning, I cannot probably pass the sign. She's dead? When I finally understand what I'm looking at, I cause a wave of terror and disgust to swell up inside my chest. What? What the fuck? She's shocked to see me, doesn't know what to do. She's like a deer in headlights or a schoolgirl bully trying to hide her misdeeds from a teacher. You are... you are early. Yes, I am. These are my clothes, Dakota. These are my cigarettes. That's my jewelry on the table. Um, I was? Um, yeah. Um, what? I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure, God Almighty, I thought I was just being neurotic whenever I noticed something dreadful familiar in you. What? I never... I can explain. Please do explain. A good ten seconds of awkward silence passed, I can see her spending and turning to in her head. This is what it looks like. What is going on? Oh my god, this is exactly what it looks like. It will just come out and say, is she being me? Dakota, are you single white female in me? What it means? <laughs> what is it? It all makes sense now. No, come on, no. I thought I was the leech in this relationship. We watched the movie together. We made fun of Jennifer Jason Leigh together. Her roommate's talking and meeting her own roommate. Haha, <laughs> what a concept, right? But I was being fed in a far more sinister way without knowing it. Don't, don't be silly. Silly? I've never even been this serious with you. So whenever she put on my makeup, whenever I used her as a mirror, was she always hyping me up because she wanted to live carelessly through me? So many little things make sense in retrospect. The little way you kept modulating your speech after me, the weird ways our tastes were always compatible, so many hard feelings so much familiar. None of it would trigger any alarms by itself and yet. She's uh, as humanly embarrassed as possible. What the fuck? Julia, listen! Don't fucking touch me! I can barely think of anything more repulsive than being put on a pedestal like this. It's like the other person is begging me to perceive them as someone worse, if not otherwise other human. Don't be like this. Just don't. You know, this will be probably be infinitely more palatable if you talk to me like a person here, and not like, I don't know, your fucking mummy. You know that? Fuck you! I've been locked in this apartment myself because of all the pandemic shit going on. It's fucking me up. I know you have it hard right now, so I didn't want to bother you. Yeah, I was uh, counting on you to ask. Huh? I was counting on you to uh, ask about how I'm feeling, babe. How is your work and life balance? Are you feeling claustrophobic? <laughs> yeah, it's just me. Or is, it, is our drug supply weirdly shrinking too fast? But no, you were too much of a self centered bitch. You regularly suck me dry and it's okay. But the moment I inter entertain the thought of taking something in return, I'm crossing a line. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm a member of a remote elite secret society. So hard to cope, Dakota. Whenever I gracefully decide to visit our apartment, I just do what I enjoy until the pain stops. Fuck you. Fuck you. Sincerely, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. There's nothing you can do but to take. You should have learned by now that it's just taking what make you happy, you big dumb bitch. Stop just. I'm destined for better things than this. Get the fuck out of here. Just, you disgust me. The cutter breaks down, crying, he grabs Jack and purse, purse. Then he runs out of the apartment. I, do, <laughs> I don't try to stop her. <laughs> what? I stand there for a short while, silence, and then look at the door. Did she take her keys? I don't know, I don't know if I care. I decide for someone else, not for myself, for a way to open a different world, not to get locked back in mine. I collapse on the soft bed, I smell her perfume, I always like it, but now it makes me slightly nauseous. I try not to think of Dakota, I think of Kaiser, I think of Kadir, I think of Kalikan. No matter what I think, I sense doom. <laughs> Definitely doom. I feel that I've just sealed my fate, whatever it may be. Everything fucking sucks. Back in the void, back in the void, back in the void. Okay, I guess we're going to rest. Okay, that was weird. That was extra weird. Uh, what, what? Wait, she was playing me? I don't understand. She, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm not gonna question it. I, I'm very confused. <laughs> what the fuck? For me, he's always starting with an image. 
An image which might be vaguely eerie or interesting, but uh, usually not an image that will provoke particularly strong feelings by itself. Usually hides a mystery that much is correct, but a mystery doesn't exist without text, or more specifically, a context. Context is everything. One way or another, you need to process uh, what you are looking at. Maybe the context will be something you heard or overheard. Maybe, although it's quite rare in Pretty Spatter, it will be your very own creative, captivating, complete interpretation. A ghost of an idea. Is this a half forgotten memory of something unspeakably beautiful that I will never ever see again? Just seen from a movie, a fragment of a music video, an animation? Or maybe it is really the last thing Cadillon ever saw in his own life. The first image looks like uh, the Lion King. Ah, <laughs> uh, This one, yeah. <laughs> when the sun beams caressing his skins and turning to ash, a giant ball of fire engulfing his body, a flame from 93 million miles away. Was he terrified? Was he grateful? There's no will, no suicide note, no nothing instead. We can only count what the local historian will write, presumably letting their biases shape the narrative one way or another. What am I looking at here? A horrible, laughable hall of mirrors? A creep whom I never ever want to see again? A vampire much more despicable than myself? Or maybe someone who loved taking care of me and deserved to be cared for in return? Funny thing, whenever I as a kite are mentally lost in dimension parallel to ours, she was my anchor, our shared history, my feeling for her were an anchor. Matthew McConaughey returned to his estranged daughter from the other side of the cosmos, from beyond the event horizon, got by nothing but love. And whenever I got back to planet Earth for a week or two, I was haunted by memory of that affection. I was the best possible version of myself towards her. But the haunting always refused to transfigure into something real, but gradually took its place where angry disappointment thoughts. A long time one thought that I was always trying to suppress. I need someone who would know how to raise me up spiritually, but all I have is a psychopath, psychopath, Pant? who's always working her ass off to lift me up without understanding what I need, asserting us both. Having these words pop up into my head hurt me because they had a ring of truth to them, but also because I knew there must be another narrative. But a narrative, I was just too stupid to find it. Story of my life, story of my own life. Still have no idea what I think about this city. Had my best city in the world, face, and just a polygon for a wealthy fuck that's face, I'm in search of a better description. One day I probably will stumble upon like a piece of writing or, or a prestigious TV show scene that will contain just that. And suddenly I will look at this place with new eyes. Now maybe I won't. I like the frustration I have back at low star, or this world constantly trailing behind reality, trapping you in a useless mindset instead of bringing enlightenment. Fuck all those flashy writers whose main concern is furthering their own brand. Douchebags who present you with limited, pathetic, depressing realities where they are kings. Fuck them hell to hell. We need words that will paint a brighter future before our eyes. But what if that can be done without interpreting the past first? What if we haven't even defined the ills and threats correctly? Once again, my thoughts return to the same visual that had me has been tormenting me for almost every waking moment of this past week. A senseless demise devoid of any context, a crime scene strip of evidence, an image created by unknown artists designed to leave you dumbfounded. The investigation is over, all the possible avenues explored, all known testimonies are in, no concrete evidence found, the play is almost complete, the actors are ready to leave the stage. I'm a little bit confused, why do you want it to investigate? Um, I failed as a detective, maybe to not fall on my own, but again, is what it is. This case is this scene, this picture never needed an investigator, and what I understand all the people in charge ever wanted was a, a talented writer. What if a ghost of an idea? When I wake up, Dakota is still not here, I don't know how to feel about it, so I just don't. Kadir hasn't left any message by the door, still that mad, huh? He will probably appeal to court to make me off the case, and if half of the garbage Kaiser was spouting, is correct, you shouldn't have much trouble convincing everyone. I look in the mirror and stare at my warped non reflection. This place is upsetting, you need to change of scenery, girl. The repressing street of a locked down New York City will do. I think about God. Okay, maybe that's why I half consciously picked the cathedral as my destination. I think of the simple cross adorning my chest and empty signifier whenever someone asks me why I wear it and hear a different story. I think of these silhouettes that I keep spouting on the corner of my eye. No. I don't even want to imagine what that means. I feel that it means that it makes me nauseous, nauseous enough. I think of my clients so closely tied to the Catholic Church. It's a loveless marriage, so to speak. 
like for example the one between my parents. Think about the great irony of the La Sombra truce with the Holy See. We are the only ones who stayed so close to the Lord's light, even though we are certain we will never either re reach it. Yeah, reach it. <laughs> reach it? Some of my shadows have visions, vision of comrades who departed his world recently. Travelling through the some abstract space, one that is disturbing and astonishing in equal measures. I almost reach where... You think he's me? Like, sorry, my, my old character. I have a strong feeling I died in the previous game. So there's a strong reason that I helped her. I helped her, maybe, I don't know. They almost uh, reach whatever afterlife there is for our kind, but then get a god consumed by dark, monstrous silhouette. The moment is our antediluvian, wasn't stopped by his final death. He's still out there behind the shadows, taking revenge for our patricide, fending on us like Saturn devouring his children. As Dakota will say, it might be not be factual, but it is an emotional truth, from joining the Camarilla to panically scrabbling for any safe house, it's like our elders are solely motivated by fear. They see how our fathers are catching up with them, and these young kindred like me who are given responsibility to clean up their mess, with a constant sense of doom looming over the horizon. We don't talk about salvation anymore, we're just minimizing the impact on domination. There's no way to live, but then again, maybe that's why they call it unlife. Shit, he's been right. <laughs> Shit! Hello there, lost ship. I'll have you know, this Shepard was an extraordinary patient in waiting for you. He was. What are you doing here? Why the knife so young? I work for about. Well, you're in luck. This place offers both body and blood. Does it? You help me share and learn their methods from pickup artists. They will all be like this guy. <laughs> I'm not in time with you. Sorry, Asbub. Step the fuck away from me. You are gonna be sorry. Oh my, something troubling you. If so, I can reach a confession. I'll leave too. If you are hurry, keep in mind, depart from inner turmoil begins in a friendly year. The one right here. Kawa Jebana Tuoya. You want me to fuck you up? Don't you? Don't you? I don't even know what she just said. Julia, as you should know by now, I always interpret this kind of response to preaching the divine as the devil steering inside. Is that what it is, Julia? The liar, the father, who lies, got hold and you're so so give me a signal. Even the smallest one, I'll do my best to spot it. Great. Something's well up inside my chest, I recognize the feeling. The handbrake just broke and definitely not on level ground. Fuck, here we go. Listen, I've had enough, alright? Enough. Enough of your sanctimonious attitude, enough of your praise and lack of basic empathy, enough of your dumb, ugly fucking love. Your fucking singularity of stupidity, tastelessness and cringe. I met all sorts of horrible street heads and ass heads this week and someone and somehow none of them got under my skin the way you do, mother fuck! Like a goddamn Genova witness going from door to door. Except you're always knocking on my fucking skull going, Hey, you know God exchanged? Have you heard of God exchanged? Like, hold on, hold it right there. They never say that God exists. What? I say what makes you think I believe God exists. Oh, now you're just fucking with me. No, I'm serious. Well, he sounds serious at least. I'm actually speechless. <laughs> I think there's been sort of silly misunderstanding that desperate needs to be cleared up. I'm all ears. I should hope so, Julia. I feel like you must have in your half of what I've been saying for you to reach this conclusion. <laughs> half? I'm quite obvious more over to 90%, but okay. That's very well possible, actually. It really takes 15 seconds of him talking. <laughs> but I may completely zone out. So, to avoid my any further mix up, I will go back to the beginning and explain the core of my religious belief. <laughs> okay, so. God damn it. I love the <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I love the Catholic imaging. I cherish the tradition, law, and all the practices. The intricacies of the theology, the message contained in the Bible. Of course, I do. Does that mean I believe that one day I will be? <laughs> I will see Big Dad in the sky. Forgive me, Lord, but I don't think so. That doesn't sound very likely, especially for a bloodthirsty creature of the night. So that's what this is all about. Funny imagery. That's very simplified, but yes, I suppose you could say that. Motherfucker, you ain't Catholic, you're just a weirdo cosplay. <laughs> you're just a weirdo cosplay. <laughs> Says a non practitioner who still wears a cross. Yeah, but I don't shove it down people's throats for fun in my spare time. I'm simply trying to share the joys a religion has brought to my own life with others. What joys? <laughs> what joys? What are you talking about? So, where to start? 
When there are so many, the joy of having plain and understandable rules to follow, the joy of having structure to your life, the joy of always knowing where to find people who share your values. Above all, is the joy of being an aristocracy, surrounding oneself with exquisite, exquisite, luxurious architecture, beautiful classical music, uh, ornate richer formalizing over action and relationship. A pursuit of virtue separating you from the masses, the hierarchies, the communities, all serve an idea greater than themselves. It's like monarchy or some Camarilla tradition, but not as gauge. Hmm. So that's what it was. You saw pretty paintings and building and thought, hell yeah, I want in! <laughs> and then you decided what it mean to you. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's really fate that brought me to the fold. But eventually it whittled down this religion to its core. To what interests me. Unbelievable. <laughs> I don't think for a second I was an empathy when I was trying to convert you. You are the embodiment of existential despair. <laughs> Thank you. Surrounding us. The one that people usually try to drown out with drugs, sex, work, Netflix. Pick your poison. <laughs> Pick your voice. <laughs> Gaming. <laughs> All of that temporary copes. Ah, the copium, guys. The copium is great in this one. Empty your cell, key your ego, get to our routine, join a community, ground your norm morality in something tangible, start perceiving yourself as a part of something greater. Hey, <laughs> join, the, join the community! <laughs> subscribe now! <laughs> okay, I cannot do this. But still subscribe now. <laughs> All of it good advice by itself, but codified in a appealing otherworldly aesthetic. One that keeps the beast at bay. One that you're almost fitting to the way you are. Unbelievable. A goddamn lunatic. I guess he is. He looks to the sky. Party forgive them. They know not uh, they know not what they do. Um actually surprised at one thing. So I believe the the beast thingy is not as important here. So you I believe you can actually uh eat the feeding part, right? Most of the time. So uh, I don't know. I guess they just put it back for uh <laughs> As an Easter egg, I guess. <laughs> Stop that, your entire ideology is just a stack, you fucking loon. And how exactly do I differ from anyone else nowadays in this regard? Stop arguing <laughs> semantics. No, you stop. Just look at yourself. A privileged burnout who refuses to invest herself in anything. Oh. Or you start to commit to anything when, for once, you're unlife, you were forced to a, into a political charge, a dangerous tax. Once it's over, you'll be back to being an aimless brat. Ouch. <laughs> Desire to murder increased. <laughs> Tenfold. Ever since World War II, I've been watching every person and every ideal I care about weed and disappear. The source of my pain and the reason on what I am. Oh my god, it kind of reminds me of that uh, Augustine story. Where he basically traveled between religion to religion. And uh, he actually had like a very hedonistic life. He's a saint now. <laughs> He's had a very hedonistic life and he wrote, uh, at the end of the day, he just converted to Christianity. And he wrote a lot of his historical and philosophical paper. And some of them actually uh, were very interesting too. Uh, he, he, uh, he was, was he, the, no, I don't remember, was he the guy that confronted uh, the skepticism? One, he said something very, uh, a quote that I really like, that uh, the only truth is there is no truth, and I believe it was him, Saint Augustine, where he, who he said, uh, if there if there is no truth, if if you're what you're saying there's no truth, how this thing you just said is the truth. <laughs> if the only truth is there is no truth, how the the statement is true. <laughs> well, you got me there. <laughs> uh, uh, he pissed off so many people. <laughs> I'm quite confident. <laughs> anyway, beware of philosophy. I can show you it's quite a uh, rabbit hole. And uh, I'm not sure how deep you can get. The source of your pain, I think, that defines you. People have been mean to you. Uh, mean to me? <laughs> oh, they were mean. Fuck off. People in third world countries keep their heads high while suffering from every sort of horror. We have a completed mental breakdown so every time you remember you have mummy issues. <laughs> Wow, classy. I don't act like you have the high ground here. You, you're obviously saddest. All I'm saying is, everyone has a different framework, a different lens to view their suffering through. Yes, and if there is one thing abandoning your humanity, shall I show you? 
is the kind of frameworks that are not enough. Petty vendettas, childish romance, pointless power struggles, the dumb gamble that is chasing a useful career. Mommy and daddy issue, sure why not, pain pleasure dictate everything. I'm here for petty vendettas, by the way. And for the revenge! I'm gonna avenge myself! And <laughs> rip Andorea on the first game. Everyone wants something bigger than this. They want to escape from this uh, drudgery. They want a psychedelic but permanent. They want to stare at Godface, even if he does not exist. You can show them how, except the cross you're wearing to your heart, Julia. Accept it. Creepy fucker. <laughs> Creepy fucker. Just accept it. <laughs> Creepy fucker. <laughs> Alright, I'll be enough, been what? The mood changing in an instant. The side of Father Leonard take us both back. Father, what are you doing here so early? You two are arguing so loud you had to come out and check. Even if it's with all the panic on the TV these days, simply walking outside feels like matching it up all so... Yeah, I'm sorry. She'll be, I was willing to turn a blind eye to your quirks because I believe you have your heart in the right place. Mostly, but I'm very disappointed in the way you approach folks in need. <laughs> Join! <laughs> Join us! <laughs> Join us! <laughs> Join this Christian channel! <laughs> Like, why are you saying it that way? Right now, Benoit Seagull is displaying all the confidence as a school teacher's favorite. But I was just trying to guide her, just head her to the right path. I know, meanwhile. Now that's the problem. The sacristy, <laughs> the sacristy is one, <laughs> is open. Please head there right now, we need to have a long talk. Get me some coffee if you wish. But, Benoit! He slowly slinks away, looking defeated, deflected, debased. I've been at the moment in my readiness, etch, you know, my soul, kind of hoping I'll never have to see him again. And this is how I remember him. Father Leonard watches him closely. I think he disappeared from sight, and he turns to me. I feel sorry for him. I keep hoping he might find some basic empathy through fate. All I've done thus far is let him leave you <laughs> at the end of your tether. Yeah, that's some fate he has. Are you okay with all the bullshit he's spouting? Uh huh. I know it's not important. I don't reject it either. It's like attraction, contrition, uh, imperfect and perfect uh, repentance. You know, one is focused on uh, a relationship with God, the other selfish and focus on a personal gain. Uh, both of them work. Yeah, but it doesn't uh, this strike you as completely missing the point. Ah, it, uh, can be worse than me. A bit, but purely secular takes on Christ's teachings are nothing new. Pascal Wager is a boring example, but uh, have you by chance read the book of the Master um, Margarita? Uh, no. I try to think if I. Uh, no, 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 not even heard of it. Uh, no. Sure, back in Poland, every teen tried to look intellectual life. Now to repeat the joke about talking cows where he never pulled vodka for a lady because of women is a pure alcohol. Okay. That's one takeaway from that novel, I suppose. Oh wow! No, I actually read it! What the fuck? I read the first 100 pages of this book! Oh my god! It's the one with the talking cat! Oh my god! I now fucking remember! I didn't finish it because I got a headache! <laughs> I, I think the last time... Uh, sorry, the last memory I have about this book is the decapitation scene of uh, the train... Uh, the train decapitating a dude, I don't remember. Uh, it was kind of weird. I also remember there was like a uh, uh, spy uh, American thingy, American uh, rubles transforming to American dollar. I don't really know what that is. I think it was something about a story about the devil. I don't know. If I, yeah, I think it's that. And there was this cat. I remember this cat walking. I, I, I didn't, I never finished the book. I, maybe one day I'm gonna finish it. Oh my god, it, it was uh, during the literature. Oh wow, wow. It happened so long ago. I think I was 14, maybe 15, when I, the first time I read it. I just couldn't... It was too much weird shit, sorry. It, it was too weird. The problem about these books, I believe, I honestly believe that the problem about these literature pieces is that you are too young to read it. <laughs> it's just too advanced stuff. I often, even my teacher, once a teacher uh, advised me a book, right? And I was like, okay, uh, will be, you know, intriguing or stuff. And I read it, and then I stopped reading it. And uh, I told my teacher, I was like, I stopped reading it. It gave me a headache. Ah, it's normal, don't worry about it. <laughs> he was not even upset that I didn't read it then. 
He's very harsh. <laughs> he gave me headache. <laughs> he gave me headache. You know how bad he is. I'm, I want to say bad book. He just gave me a headache. There's too much random shit in it. <laughs> so if you're too young and you're reading stuff like that, it gives you so much fucking headache. No one is stop reading. It's like, what the fuck am I reading? <laughs> this doesn't connect at all. <laughs> No wonder fucking young kids and teenagers love shit <laughs> line novels and shit books. So a lot of people call it shit books, right? Like uh, books that are trash, trash reading. Because at least they fucking connect then with them. <laughs> it's like, I can understand what's going on more or less. I may not view words, but at least I understand the fucking connection of the story. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. There was a complaint that I have. <laughs> like, the fuck I had to say was so complicated, you make sense at all to me. <laughs> um, I may gonna finish one day, I don't know. Because uh, I had in mind a challenge that I wanted to do um, for a YouTube video too. But I think is that it will not, it will definitely not make me any views, but still I won't kind of do it. Just because uh, uh, I found it funny if not stupid kind of deal. I uh, will see. I will. We'll see. We'll see what it leads us. It's probably gonna lead us nowhere, but it'll be fun. I hope I hope it'll be fun. I read this unmoving deception of Christ who is not a divine being. Stripping uh, may take apologies, but open for transgen trash transgenders. <laughs> Jesus and Satan understood as powerful force battling within us. Wanna have to read it again? It's been too long, sounds nice then. I'm like I wanna say it was a bad story. I think it was intriguing. It's just that mm, headaches. It was painful to read, okay? <laughs> My brain didn't have enough cells. <laughs> I was too stupid, okay? <laughs> I stretched lazily to take out another smoke layer that watches me closely before speaking up again. Julia? Mm-hmm. Four hours from now, there's going to be a meeting at Elysium. The big finale of Celebration of Power. Aaron will be there, but they were counting on you not to show up. Uh, yeah. That sounds about right. The good Sherry plans to present the results of the investigation in your stead. It's simple, crude strategy, my work, but begs to be countered without outrageous tactic. Take it as you will. The game is about to end. I, I see. <laughs> Setting I cannot save now, eh? Anyway, momentarily I left now, found it. All I can master is uh, eloquent. Huh? <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Ah, oh, don't ask me, I'm just a messenger. What a latest message to you then? A good friend, a coaching friend. I'd be able to tell you more than that, even if you force me to. Uh... <laughs> it was me all along! <laughs> I'm helping Julian to survive. Well, shit. You're welcome, Julia. <laughs> he fuck they fucked with me! Let's see how they're gonna fuck with you! <laughs> this is the momentary... Sorry, this is the moment that I might decide the rest of my days. What would you do in my place, father? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> When I was faced with a dilemma that will shave the rest of my life, the word felt too big and scary, impulsive to understand, to simply escape from that choice into the seminary. Really? Run away? Sounds like uh, I cannot really run away, I believe. They will catch me easily. It's what your idea of good advice, I'm gonna have to ask you to shove it. <laughs> Ditto. I will expect nothing else. Don't you regret it? Regret what? You're kind of shady, but... Don't seem like a bad guy. See, you have accepted people above you as responsible for those horrible things. If our superiors act uh, count as your own sins, then on the face of it, it's probably half the people in this world are irredeemable. Half? It's like saying that sin of you will bestow on your child, something like that. So it's extra irredeemable, because the original sin. That's the whole fucking problem. Nobody fucking explained this in fucking school. <laughs> so that's the concept of original sin. This is why. There's this country of shame. Clear, clever. Don't, 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 don't quote me. <laughs> don't quote me on this stuff. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I'm just an idiot to start doing YouTube videos. <laughs> clever, but no real answer. And be a low level crowd for assholes. <laughs> we will find a wholly objective goal. <laughs> Ob objectionable. Um, in a, it's no way to live. Uh, I don't know, is it? Uh, I finished the milk in silence. I have to go. We have to go. The knife and when we'll see each other again. But when that happens, I probably won't be the same old me. Maybe I'll be dead. Of course, but before I leave to scold Benoit, let me say one more thing. Yeah? 
There are difficult times my parishioners keep cal calling me. The things people are doing, going through. They might never admit, but if this keeps up, it will cause horrifying visible damage to his nation. Guess it's a little bit too late, huh, Leonard? A dreadful darkness killing us all. Little by little, like every powerful evil, it manifests itself little by little. The problem about my video is that most of them are scheduled and I think they are not contemporary enough. <laughs> so when I'm talking about things, ah, it's all news, idiot! And yet, simple as it may be, I confess to being strangely excited for a moment. We have seen this suffocating normal disappear. It's time to dream a new world is possible. Is it though? Oh, this empty street, Julia. No matter how the city feels right now, bask in these shadows. And uncertainty is after the apocalypse comes to the great bird. The Amici Noctis await your next report with great curiosity. The friend? The, the knife friends? Is this how you call it? Amici Noctis? Really? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I keep from another sprint away. Now I know what I must do. Hey, Mo, my lone ghost and companion. <laughs> we'll move uh, here for good from You know, the old country. You were the only close friend who kept me in common. Never find the right place back here. Never find the right place here. Especially now. I'm not quite alive. Not quite dead. Not that Slavic. Not that American. <laughs> but maybe it's about. <laughs> maybe it's about time I finally care about carve out some space for myself. It's been a long road, hasn't it? Wish me luck. Good goodbye, Julia. <laughs> I catch you in front of the Artel because, of course, he had to be in the first person I meet here. No way. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be the laughing stock of the entire city if I don't show up for the real solution of my own investigation. How about you demonstrate that a modicum more courtesy? Courtesy girl, I should put you on a trial that cannot guarantee I eventually want. You mess with Kaiser, the eminent scribes of this city, beating up in a wolf like a random goon. He'll do everything he can to destroy you from now on, and uh, my bet is he will succeed. Should I make. Should I cut that. Cut the dog. Should I behead the asshole? Whatever will be, will be. For now, at the very least, I'd like to show the court I'm not a baby fledgling. Who can see a text shaking into the end? You're making a huge mistake. How do you even learn these meetings happening in the first place? Maybe I'm not as trash as the investigators you thought I was. I never said. <laughs> but you're showing it. <laughs> I solved this mystery, douchebag! <laughs> That's not fair assessment. I wanted to finish this whole mess myself for your own good. It will be nice if you ask what I think next time. I'm actually pissed off he tries to pull off this with off without me, but I'm not in a show counting on being able to guilt trip him into submission. His depth sig of resignation proves that my tactic was successful. Fine, but you will stay quiet the whole time, no tricks, ifs or buts. <laughs> I'm pretty much sure I'll be dead, so I I'm quite confident I have to say something. But of course if he's not gonna immediately kill me, but yeah. But of course! His way. He's definitely the man of the gallery! Ready to die? The celebration of power almost over. I ran the back of their usual respective styles again, looking wary of each other's company, charmed with their own little words. The auto is nearby empty now, and Kadir is certainly strong arming. The last remaining nobody seems to leave in the premises. Eventually, only me and select a few New York Camarilla VIP remain. Ah, I Miss mean, Whiskey. Barely made it, huh? <laughs> the asshole with the glue on the smile spot me first. He just authentically <laughs> enthused to see me as ever, so he finally showed his face around here. I wasn't sure if you join us tonight. <laughs> Could he make this meeting sound like a one man show? The preparation took me a bit longer than I thought they would, I apologize. How are you? My chance planning to surprise us with something? Well, if I was planning something, it wouldn't be a surprise if I told you. Now, wouldn't it? Can I can I wear <laughs> What is it? Yes! Can I have everyone's attention? Please, we're about to begin. Everyone's remaining in the building gathers around Kadir. Uh, exciting. Extra exciting. Is everyone present? Present. Unaccounted for? My prince. Yes, before we begin, let me welcome an unusual guest to our fold. Is Kotoki? He just is a corner from behind which emerged a silhouette that will have never ever appeared here under any normal circumstances. 
name talking and the Baron of the Bronx. It was delegated here by my compatriots as our oversight authority. I'm here to observe the result of the investigation. Nothing more, nothing less. Let me stress this one last time. This is one time occurrences meant to alleviate the tension in the city. Now a symbol of mutual recognition, not in the slightest. I pick at Addison's face to get a feel for how hard a loyalist might grapple with this arrangement. His expression betrays no surprise, only a slight discomfort. If even he is fine with it, the prince must have been extremely convincing about the necessity of a temporary truce or about some uh, Machiavellian tactic. So he's got already out of her sleeve, who knows. Of course, we might have uh, irreconcilable differences, but there are times they have to be temporarily put aside in order to quell and rest in open paths for constructive, meaningful change. If anyone would like to voice their concern, the time is now. Toki, Arturo, Panhard exchange glances. Normally I consider it an innocent gesture, knowing what I know. I roll my eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I stick over a carrot. Toki, what made you break and sell your compatriots? How much do you really know? If not, Kadir. My eye. <laughs> What the heck was that? He stepped into the middle of the room and cleared his throat, theatrically. First, let me plainly state the conclusion I'm going to present. It's by no s sorry, it's by no means my own achievement. This is the result of a tireless investigation conducted by talented kindred. I won't name here. A telling glance in Tokyo direction serves a succinct explanation of why he refuses to call them by their name. I will call Julia Sobinski, who's a ceaseless groundwork over the past few nights, serve as a foundation. For the findings that are about to be revealed here, thank you, Julia. It's not the first time he sets out uh, to oversell my achievement. As the sheriff in my role here is mostly representative, I spent the last few days overseeing the celebration in Elysium, being sure no harm will be whole before anyone present. Luckily, none did. Like, oh, we should increase the security! There was never need for security. <laughs> Looks like the prince's decision to move forward with the event was the correct one. And for that, we should extend our thanks to Kadir, and let us not overlook our guests to a degree. I managed to convince my key allies that diplomatic action is the only way forward in this case. No matter how wrong-headed the enemy can be, we still need avenues to negotiate and communicate. I'm curious how Tamika will react for, to him looking like a corporate bastard. Designing into the future order is missing potential for change and the lies and rest. No wonder she dumped him. Spare us the empty pleasantry and let Kadir move on. I don't have all nights for this. Right, I'll be concise. Douglas, boss Callion, remains where found in his office by one of his ghouls. First thing that evening, the first kindred to confirm it was another anarch baron talking present here. A mystery book, our Orchard, who refer to the circumstance of Callion's death as a classic closed room mystery. The metal door locked from the inside to serve as our sole way in. There was no murder weapon, no useful testimony, and the evidence was, uh, how do I put it, barely circumstantial at the best. What was left for uh, for us was to one hell of a puzzle, and uh, one where Danza could even be approached using the tried tested question, qui bono. We were presented with poorly timed power up evil, a tense situation where a long planned celebration was in danger, suddenly all of us were faced with uncertain future. Everyone. Uh, Everybody benefited, yet nobody did. No one was especially fond of Callihan, but it's not like anyone seemed particularly keen on removing him from the equation, especially at this time. For a moment, we were sure it was the beginning of an offensive on the part of the Camarilla. We started wondering just how far our retaliation should be. And as for us, we were momentarily convinced that the Anax were plotting to blame us for their own internal power struggles. A tense situation resolved only thanks to the skillful and swift diplomacy. Dare say yet another victory for our talented prince. Jilla made sure to examine all the contacts Kalikan might have had in his last day. Both sex her efforts were tireless. He only rarely misguided. He just had to spit out uh, at least a one biting remark, didn't he? And well, he's probably just covering his ass. But as exhaustive as they might have been, they only served to muddle the possibilities or explain them. Kalihan led the R. Uh, <laughs> Kalihan had a lot of enemies, but they were the most infuriating kind of enemies one ever have. Folks who barely even thought of his anymore. In other words, no one really had a particular interest in getting rid of him, because they could always simply work their way around him. 
Just before the last Christmas, he even witnessed the first ever successful first light raid against his extremely profitable blood trade supply lines. Wow. Telone is about his up his sleeves, a downright shady ability to perfectly maneuver around all SI activities. Gun. Kalihan declined as a parent at all, and dominant effect made his empire slowly crumble. Up until recently, he's done an admirable job keeping up with the times and getting away with murder, but suddenly all of the prison spotlights were on him. The recent stories we hear about him all depict a depressed, downright manic recluse, lashing out at everyone, struggling, utterly failing to fit the new reality he found himself in. A closed room, no evidence of struggle, a lack of strong white dinnets, the corpse being found in the very early evening of the hours, the conclusion is simple. Kalyan's final death was self-inflicted. Suicide, to put it in a simple terms, mm -hmm. Sun has filled the room. So what that really is the angle they'll be pushing, isn't it? And here is Sheriff. I will explain it. It was an independent detective who first set me on this theory only last night. There is no suicide note of any kind, of course, but the message out recently the part I was sent to might not have necessarily been a verbal one. The peculiar thing was the position of the body. It was like an arrow pointed at us to notice something. It appears the last thing Callihan saw in his online was a portrait of the Lord Castlereagh in the second Marquis of Londonbury, which is coincidentally where Callihan was born. The most he was a revealed traitor, a heartless suppressor of all dissent, the main threat against each rebellion the Irish have gone through, successful in all ways but those the matter to his people. Some call him a tragic figure holding together selfish allies against a common threat, always fighting for painful and a popular compromise, ruined by overwork, sickness and poor public speaking skills. Not too hard to see why Douglas Callaghan will empathize. Politics, yeah, yes, do you not really polite sneakers? <laughs> Politic. <laughs> Politic. <laughs> Indeed, especially when you realize that the sickness is in his blood, his failures, the hatred from his own people, and a growing paranoia led him to commit a dramatic suicide with his own four walls. And I see. The assumption is instead of stabbing himself to death with a knife or a pen, he decided to let the sun embrace him in its warmth. Castaway face burned into his eyes, a pathetic final death. A little bit too poetic for my taste. It's not a closure we might have wanted, but probably the best explanation of this motivation that we are going to get. Does everyone follow? <clears throat> a heavy silence fills the room. Nobody speaks up except Prince Panhalt. To me, it's all perfectly understandable, agreeable, and most importantly, if it's the man I come to understand, or the last two decades. Consentient murmurs resonate through the room. A great in my heart. There were some ir irregularities in the handling of the crime scene. But the Anarch's little finding suggests Kalyan's resentful goals were to blame. Folks were being really folks have been really happy to see that. It's all in saying they went overboard with the celebration, they all being interrogated though. Yes, I've received all the resulting talent and it's done nothing to change my mind. Their depiction of Kalyan's state of mind only serves to support the suicide theory. It is my suggestion that we all announce that his is to our respective communities first thing tomorrow night. Sound reasonable, and all I think that concludes this meeting, I let the keeper of the Elysium do the honors. No time wasted, huh? Alright, does anyone have anything to add? Any questions to ask? Take your time. Silence. Look at everyone, just sitting on a perfect agreement. Congrats everyone, congrats us. We achieve a perfect victory. No loose ends, no rocking boat, no nothing. Makes you want to puke. How many of them contributed to this final report? How strongly does Kadir believe the shit running from his mouth? He always become a real loyalist, a fanatic even, but... Miss Julia, any final statements? <laughs> Do you wanna know? This is it. No, never. The annual can blow this pathetic charade wide open, it's me. But there's no coming back from this road, and he has a cost. Wait, am I not surrounded by all of them? I spent all of my life and our life on social climbing and sunken cost fallacy. is kicking. Challenge them here might be my only way on ever making it out. Of the pit in, I'm in. On the other hand, maybe this is my time to head into unknown, kill my ego, at least temporarily, shut up the voices and uh, the elders screaming in my head, betray my la sombra instinct. Make all these ghosts go away and figure out something new, no matter how scary it might be. Do I dare or maybe don't feel like there's an incredible price to be won waiting right in front of me? If I just dare to take out this revolver with this single bullet I've hidden on me. Oh. And invite everyone here for a crazy game of Russian roulette. 
I also get this foreboding gangster movie feeling, like this is a scene where the future mobster could have gotten out, but he didn't. Uh, in the end, did Callihan think all the splendor of the golden era was worth this pathetic end? It's like there were two shell, two shell, shells, yeah, shell. There are two shells battling, pop, 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 for dominate inside of me. One of them has to die, the other gets to leave. Honestly, it's a flip of a coin. I reflect on all the kindred I've met, less than I've learned. Choices I've made over the past few nights to make a decision. And then the feeling like I'm simply following the way I conducted this investigation to its logical conclusion, I respond. Actually, I do. <gasps> we are going for it! <laughs> Let's see if I die. <laughs> if we die. It's like the busy staff flashed in Kadir's eye for a brief moment. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't! But I do. Miss Sowinski, don't make a scene. Believe me, every one of you will really, really, really regret it if they don't listen to what I have to say. Will we now? Oh, absolutely. They stand up and step right in front of Kadir. Don't me wrong, Kadir has done a spectacular job selling you a ready-made narrative to package and export to the outside world, hail to the sheriff, and all that. Well, was this little show really necessary? Do you all really need to hype each other up to believe this fairy tale? What you're getting out, little girl? Easy for now, my prince. You sold me all you want, and Scully couldn't make it all the sweeter when this little girl kicked your ass. I get it at the fact there's a different, more reasonable theory that explains everything, everything to a T. <laughs> Enlighten us! <laughs> Enlighten us, Julia! <laughs> That's great for you, sweetheart, but do I really need to stay here and listen to it? The door is right there, but on the off chance you get implicated in something tonight, don't you want a chance to defend yourself? And what are the chances of me being implicated on anything tonight? I'm pretty sure that a lot of kindred in this room are asking themselves the same question right now. In each case, my answer is the same. You won't find that out unless you stay right here where you are. She stays. Alright, where was I? Ah! Let's assume that because of Boss Callihan, that really was a suicide. Our man said, Oh, fuck everything. Open the window, shut it, electric break, and don't <laughs> take care of all his problems. And I'd assume that he really meant to send a message using that portrait of a Lord Castle Rag. Sounds dramatic, but sure, let's go with it. I just completely understand that Castle Red was pushing to take his own life as a result of conspiracy against him. Needless to say, his biggest fan would have missed the detail, huh? According to historians, the man's last word implied that some powerful people face him with a choice. Denunciation or death. Which of an ambitious politician is not a choice at all. So if you are claiming that Callihan left us a hint, it's a troubling hint, don't you think? What are you... Enough, we are not dealing with conspiracy theories here. Of course you are not, I mean a conspiracy theory backed by the elites is no longer called such. It's propaganda. Is there a point to this little show you are putting on, Miss Sowiski? Other than digging yourself a deeper and deeper metaphorical hole. Oh, Toby. Oh, Toby. Oh, Mr. Turo, you are still trying to tell yourself it's me who is in trouble and not you? That's adorable. Listen, you. No, you listen. If you're in shock, definitely not used to resistance. I don't blame you for badly propaganda, you're a politician, that's what you do. I'm just laughing at you for coming up with shitty, poorly conceived propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry because it was bad and poorly made. So, will someone stop her or...? Mr. Addison Payne, you are an architect behind the local Camarilla current speeches and general political narrative. Be honest, does this shit show really met your standards? We say to each other lie and blinking slowly, feeling each other out. Eventually, with a barely audible snigger, he whispered to his servant, How do I put this? I'm always open to a better pitch. That's all I wanted to hear here. All I'm asking for now is a little patience that I can spare. Oh, for God's sake, Addison. Come on, man. You cannot possibly... Silence. Said what I said. Now that I talk. Thank you. I'm starting to have fun with this. Or more like a feeling that we're just rushed behind. <laughs> I'm starting to have fun with this. Or more like I'm fooling uh, with Russia reminding me of the first time managing to ride a bike. Uh, <laughs> the truth. The revelation. The important thing is to keep up the mental focus on pedaling hard. Then you think of falling. You thought you had it all figured out, didn't you? An improperly handled murder scene and a disposable investigator for also blindly stumble around, hopelessly chasing loose ends. The only problem is that tonight I realized I was using the wrong tools all along. Instead of a salute magnifying glass, I only need a journalist pen. 
so I sat down tonight and wrote my first article in almost a year to hours of ceaseless writing creative juices. <laughs> creative juices? <laughs> for the entire time, everything miraculously falling to page. And frankly, I think this is my masterpiece. I get carried away and jump on one of the benches. Okay. <laughs> okay! <laughs> you wanna hear the contents? I know you're dying to hear that contents, so okay, let's hear the contents. Eileen Storingbridge, High Ranger of the Chantry of the Five, Buru, violently splitting with her students after he discovered her plans for horrifying experiments with blood magic. Her target, Byron Callihan, said student, conveniently missing. We got an scurvy sword too. Agaton, the warlock personal diary. Extra, extra, read all about it. He's trying to hide that she's nervous, but she's practically shaking. But she'll be the one shaking. I'm a piecing. Together with a little sorry of relative Soli in I have gluing together into something coherent with educated assumption and pure conjecture. But at least I'm fairly sure she recognized me as a threat now, just what I was hoping for. Next out is true that Toki, the brave Anak Baron, prior to the next uh, de facto leader of the site in New York City, have been manipulating his entire faction to secure the position. His appeasement candidate convinced his key allies that the revolution is not an option at the moment, appearing as a reasonable alternative to his bloodthirsty rivals. His ace in the hole was a strategically efficient ability to establish diplomatic channels with the Camarilla, which he then used to gain a series of small concessions from the New York City court. Could it be that Prince Parton, having realized that uh, the longtime collaborator Baron Callihan was just an undesirable asset? found a different more 2020 candidate to be leader of the Anarchs. Extra, extra, read all about it. <laughs> this one not shaking, he just angry. And this one just seems confused. And what about the fact that talking Helen Panther, Thomas, Arturo, Carter, Van der Weyden, and Eileen Sturbridge will all summon to Carter's office right before his death? Could it be that the so-called boss employs some final desperate measure to stop him downward spiral into the irrelevance, at which point a rush the plan to bring on his demise was executed? Could it be that the Kaiser, the legend of New York City for brokers striking deals left and right, we both the Camarilla and the Anax, while they tape Caligan office to eavesdrop on those negotiations? Extra extra, I read all about it. You could, <laughs> could cut the atmosphere here with an knife and it's only getting worse. For them, at least, I feel better than I have felt in years. The fact nobody is uh, protesting properly means I'm hitting the nail on the head. Could it be that for the entire 21st century, the conflict between the New York City Camarilla and the Annex was a sham? What if the Second Inquisition operation in the city were consulted with the leaders of the two sects? How deep does the rot of corruption go? And what about Sophie Langley's disappearance, attempts of the unlives who will be members of a coterie she attempted to set up alongside her ward last year? Will that all those things be connected? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Stay tuned, dear readers. <laughs> Heavy silence befalls the room. When it becomes too over bearing, Kadir breaks his by hawking loudly. His poker face is undecipherable. And where pray tell can one read all about it tomorrow? Ten different places, among them, of course, a report received by Clan La Sombra elders in Chicago. Constantly mixing truth with lies. I do know some facts, I did write some. But all in all, his confidence grift, plain and simple. Have you sent it out already? No. And the Father Leonard is not the channel I used to reach Chicago, in case you were wondering. I took every possible precaution, the way you taught me. I know this hurts him, but I cannot show a single weakness right now. Oh, this is ridiculous. She's probably buffing. No, she knows, Thomas. Helen, how can you be certain? I just am. The diary probably just saved my ass. Thank you, Agaton, I guess. <laughs> Rest in peace, Agaton. Even if I was bluffing, it's all about the tactics. You nominate a special investigator. Then the moment she presents her findings, you do what? Subjugate her? Get rid of her? How do you get, get out of this? I get it. You gave me the role, the little title, because you were count on me remaining the same shitty, useless nobody I was ever since I started working with the... For the courts. But funny. How that works, isn't it? A week ago, nobody will give a shit about what I have to say. Now, oh, I am a grave threat to an entire Illuminati New World Order arrangement you got going on. I still maintain you cannot possibly know and prove all of it to the claims you listed. There's just no way I know. I checked. First off, stop bullshitting. You don't know that for sure. Secondly, if you are right, so what? I got leverage now. Because my journalistic past, you gave me a detective title. 
I wasn't worried a rat has in doing detective work, but ironically, gave me the opportunity to do the best reporting I've ever done. And it doesn't even matter if it contains some facts that your official narrative. And you know why? Because the story I offer makes infinitely more sense, morally, emotionally, metaphysically, however you name it, is far hotter commodity than low rent bullshit you peddle. People nowadays buy into barely coherent crap like 5G and QAnon. What is QAnon? Once they uh, get a hold of my perfectly logic story and see you don't really have anything to counter it, they'll be fucked. Hell, the very fact that none of you have denied any of my allegations yet speaks volumes, doesn't it? The prince is absolutely furious that she <laughs> she's not in charge, visibly scrambling to figure out some counteroffensive. Why will anybody listen to you? You made the story of yours sound completely irrespectable, like tablet garbage. Fiber will be fine, just mean you will reach more folks. What? What do you want? Now we are talking! <laughs> now we are talking! A primogen position for Clan Sa Clan for Clan La Sombra, and numbers of privilege befitting the title. We can negotiate the details, but a nice apartment in downtown Manhattan is a must. Are we big, are we? What could we even bring to the fold as a primogen? I turn away from her to speak to the manager, Mr. Payne. Yes. As you can see, we all found ourselves in quite a mess here. Indeed, to say the best. If I find us a way out, will you form a professional relationship with me and back the decision to make me a primogen? The figure in the wheelchair let out a sarcastic laugh, sounding like it, the final wheeze of a dying man. <laughs> You're really as winking for fences, are you, childy? I'm not suicidal most of the time, at least. I'm gonna be doing this if I didn't have my sights set sky high. I understand, so how do we propose we solve this little predicament? Easy, we give the masses an even better story than the one I just suggested when it benefits nearly all the parties in this room. Alright then, thanks to your moxie, you secure yourself my tentative support, Childy. Let's hear it. Thank you very much, okay then. During my investigation, recovered some interest intel about a certain individual. Praise be to the Kaiser Band Melibusin. <laughs> Said individual will be definitely prefer he's behind. Said individual will be definitely prefer he's behind the same dealings to remain unknown. For the last 20 years he's been on and off, mediator between the different parties in the city, he prides himself on his diplomatic skills. Interestingly enough, though he, one of his main motivations was selling intel about both the Camarilla and the Annex to any party that might be interest usually that man Kaiser. With a reasonable degree of certainty, he can be held responsible for a few recent failed Camarilla operations. That we can hell and pan her position. He dreams of being a prince, you see. I can already see him awkwardly shifting his weights. Recently, he obtained control over an IT company called Double Spiral, which he uses to influence New York City kind. Now it's that for the, his agenda and weaken his political enemies. He also operated the most powerful law firm in the city. He uses both the, of these tools so that he can manipulate the mortals to slowly tie a nose. A noose around Anna, can leaders and code members who he wants to come. I'll talk you, of course, about Carter and Wanda Wayden. So we're gonna blame everything to Wanda Wayden? A split second, all eyes in the room are set on him. <laughs> People, whatever she throws at me, I'm sure I can explain. I throw a file I record from Kaiser Lima at the bench. Are you sure? Because there's a hell of a lot of to explain. I his own servant pick up the file so that his master can browse through it. If that's not enough, I'm sure Double Spire will be happy to deliver us more. So all the things you said the other night were steaming pile of bullshit, Carter. I assume we were friends. There's good explanation for every single thing that I listed there, as well on my father's grave. Even if there is a doubt, you can justify allowing a girl who's a little more than a fledgling, ripping your credibility to shred in a matter of seconds. You bring yourself as something infinitely worse than a traitor, Carter. You're a weak traitor. Thomas Allen! Don't you even dare speak to me, you bastard. That was the last element of my strategy. I hope they won't throw any cool balls on my way. Because from now on, it's all pure impro improvisation. Just two minutes ago, I was the number one enemy everyone in this room. Now, in uh, their unexpected ally, revealing a common foe that some people in this room have wanted to nail since forever. All I'm saying is, we got ourselves a perfect scapegoat to pin everything on. Shady dealings between both sides, all the real conspiracy. He was involved in the possibly perfect looks and history. 
the chain de food and accompany his phone will be enough to keep some kindred in this city happy for years. He shots me a demented look, one I assume is stipulated reserved for a future strangling victim. <laughs> you, you, you cannot do this to me. And why is that? You are, you, you are, you are incompetent. Wow. That's the best you can do, seriously? Kadir? Yes, my prince. Seize him. No, no, I beg you, just no. You can come with me without struggle, or in torpor, as usual. These three strike with me, then you're gone. No, 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 no. There's too many those, okay. He talks a lot, but with a minimal resistance. Kadir drags me out of the room, and that's the last I've ever seen of him. For a good minute, everyone just stands there confused. And that is a beginning to come up. Bravo, Mr. Winsky. I haven't seen such an adventurous power play in years. Maybe your generation is not all lost after all. Does that mean I can count on your support? Of course, as far as I'm concerned, you're the kind of ruthless primogen the city needs. Especially now, and one scene will probably be made vacant. So, what do you want? <laughs> so, what do you say, me, my prince? Pan her recoils a little when she hears me refer her in such an official manner. My relationship with Addison is decades long conflict, and by now, I know which hills I'm willing to die on. This is not one of them. Rejoice, girl! You're going to get what you want as well as deserve. You do have uh, one important condition, though. Of course you do. Mr. Payne has, uh, I'm sure you'll agree, in Primogen is an important representative position. Demands nothing but a display of impeccable respect for the masquerade and the traditions. Of course. Is this my concern that it won't be proper for us to be represented by someone who openly violated the rules of the kindred society? But of course, that wouldn't do at all to have to openly renounce their old ways, at the very least. Indeed, I think that in the case of Mr. Whiskey, who has lived with a mortal under a single roof for a long time, the best course of action will be to renounce her and give her up to our sheriff. The kind of gesture will prove to the new primary identification of the code beyond any reasonable doubt. Hmm. Yes, yes. I definitely agree her ambition and pride are admirable, but uh, we prudent for us to demand a display of humility as well. Sadistic fox. My thought exactly. Well then. Guns and miss. <laughs> What's so funny, Miss Sawinski? I see in your eyes, Arturo, you naive fool. You think you're a goddamn clever. You think I could have gotten this far if I didn't think at all true. There's only one response. I agree, do what you must. He's speechless. He thought he had me pinned and I simply responded with a checkmate. Guess that solves our problem then. Let's head out for now. It's been an exhausting evening and dawning is nearing. Yeah, yes, let's just do that. He walks pain out looking unstrung and defeated. Soon after, Kadir was ordered to take care of Dakota. He asked me if I want to know what was done of her. My reply was honest. Not really interest, no. He said that he's gotten himself into a terrible game, the rules of which defy comprehension. I replied that if I'm winning and climbing upward, I must be doing something right. Still, we don't talk too much these days, beyond professional interaction. I have a much bigger word to think about, one that fills me with happiness. Come to think of it, my current state reminds me of those few hellic young days right after my embrace. It might not last, but at this point I have asked myself what does. It was about the next bigger rush. I'm writing speeches and official communication for the New Yorker uh, Camarilla these days, helping out pain from time to time. Too funny. I never felt more accomplished and more fulfilled as a journalist than I am now. Karen is visiting in a few days to congratulate me on the behalf, behalf of the entire Chicago page, Karen. Apparently, I'm no only matter expectation, but exceeded them. She keeps bragging to everyone about how great her eye was, <laughs> was in picking me. <laughs> <laughs> it's only it's only this shadow that keeps getting to me. I notice them everywhere everywhere these nights. There are more and more and more them surrounding me at the time goes on. It doesn't matter. I like to think that I'm being cast because of my future looks so bright. Yeah yeah. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, we managed to F them all over. Somehow we succeeded, and somehow we managed to do it. And what the most interesting part is that we managed to do what Sophie could not do. Anyway, uh, this game has a bad ending and also uh, another ending, I believe. Anyway, we got the good ending. 
which uh, some people can argue uh, wasn't, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, we kind of realize we could become uh, far more ruthless. And I believe that we may be, Julia, may be the next antagonist of the next game. Although I was hoping to uh, take down Toby, <laughs> or Thomas, whatever his name was. Uh, but it's a shame. Uh, revenge! I am here for petty revenge, but I did not get satisfying revenge. Anyway, the story was not too shabby. Uh, as usual, it was uh, far more... Uh, op less optional, I may say. There was far less option in regard to. Uh, there was a uh, funny thing. There were people complaining about it, uh, the first game about not having multiple endings. And this one had multiple endings. <laughs> but it was have far less optional. But uh, it is what it is. It was not too shabby. I actually quite enjoyed this. Uh, it was quite intriguing to read, so it was not too bad. Uh, and as usual, thank you for watching. And uh, it's been quite an uh, adventure. Uh, and I'm still curious about the fact that who is going to be our... Uh... I'm still curious about what happened to us from the previous game and uh, wondering what to Shadow Thing are telling me. And... Uh... Oh, well, that's it, I guess.